This session constitutes a portion of the workshop presented at the 6th World Congress of Regional Anesthesia held in September 2023. The thoracic vertebra is formed by a prominent triangular spinous process with a characteristic oblique direction towards the caudal direction, two pedicles, two laminae that overlap with the superior and inferior ones like the tiles of a roof, and four articular processes, two superior and two inferior. In addition to the complexity of the thoracic vertebra, we must add the presence of an additional bony structure, the ribs. In the posterior thoracic wall, if we perform a virtual dissection, starting from the deepest part of this paraspinal space, we will find a group of muscular filaments and ligamentous structures that has classically been called the intertransverse connective tissue complex, multifidus, intertransversus, interspinous, longus and brevis rotators, costal elevators, and the ligaments that we have already seen confer stability to the vertebral costal junction. On the surface, we will find the erector spinae muscle, consisting of the spinalis, longissimus, and iliocostalis muscles. Although the muscle as a whole runs along the entire spine from the occiput to the sacrum, a part of it, the spinalis muscle, ends in the lower thoracic region. Two muscles that anesthesiologists do not take into account. When we talk about the posterior thoracolumbar wall are the superior and inferior serratus posterior muscles. This is most likely because our planes of exploration are carried out at points where this muscle is not present. However, a very important aponeurotic fascia extends between them from an anatomical point of view, the thoracolumbar fascia. This would be for many anatomists the anatomical continuity of the thoracolumbar fascia at the thoracic level. The fourth layer, superficially, would be formed by the muscles rhomboid minor and major, which extend to the posterior border of the scapula. The most superficial muscular plane would be formed by the trapezius muscle and the second aponeurotic fascia that we will find in the posterior thoracic wall, the deep fascia. Reconstructing the cross-section in an axial view. Beginning the exploration in an axial plane. Over the midline of the thoracic spine, we will identify the bony ridge of the spinous process and vertebral lamina. As we move the transducer laterally, the transverse process and costotransverse joint will come into view. Shifting the transducer slightly cordially will allow us to identify the transverse process and the exit of the paravertebral space covered by the internal intercostal membrane, originating from the muscle of the same name. We can rotate the transducer supported over the upper transverse process in a counterclockwise direction until the shadow generated by the lower rib is observed. This image allows us to clearly identify the paravertebral space. Changing to a paramedian sagittal plane and placing our transducer on the costal plane, we will observe consecutive rounded images with posterior acoustic shadowing and a sliding hyperechoic line that will correspond to the pleura. As we move medially, the rounded images will transform into irregular images shaped like camel humps. These will correspond to the costal transverse joints. Our target is found in the current sequence, rectangular images with posterior acoustic shadowing where the pleura hides in deeper planes. In thin patients, the internal intercostal membrane delimiting the paravertebral space can be identified. The distinct sawtooth or tile-like image will make us consider that we are over the lamina. Above the tip, distal end of the transverse processes, we will identify intertransverse ligaments, superior costotransverse ligaments, and costotransverse radiate ligaments. The retrosuperior costotransverse space is found posterior to the costotransverse ligament. To perform an ESP block, the needle tip should make contact with the periosteum of the transverse process depositing the anesthetic between this and the posterior fascia of the erector spinae muscle. The intertransverse block involves the injection of local anesthetic into a deeper plane inside the retrocosta transverse space between two adjacent transverse processes and above the internal intercostal membrane without penetrating it. In the paravertebral block, the internal intercostal membrane is penetrated and the local anesthetic is injected directly into the paravertebral space.